Chuck Johnson defending FARC Low Dollar Series Champion grabbed the Prolapse Pull Award over rookie Roy Warren. Lev Azarov and Kevin Monroe make up row two. This race was originally scheduled to be a double header uh, when the calendar came out during the winter, but the Albuquerque Speed Bowl now has an expanded pit lane. The pit entrance has been moved back to the middle of three and four, which will accommodate a full 36 car field. This track is known for its tight racing, so it's going to be very crowded out there. And now we will take a trackside for the start of the Big Bunny Bash. Pace car leaves the field in the hands of Chuck Johnson and Roy Warren, the champion and the rookie. The green flag is out, and Roy Warren really falls back. Entering turn one, Lev Azarov gets by him for second as Chuck Johnson pulls out to a comfortable lead out of turn two. And it was vital for Chuck Johnson to get that jump as the Albuquerque Speed Bowl is a progressively banked track. The outside is definitely the preferred line, but we've got trouble on lap three. Joshua Pacer, the defending winner of this race, turns Archer Helms around. Tom Brayton and Xavier Ruiz get caught up in it. Brayton and Helms are going to go out on lap three while Xavier Ruiz is going to continue. Joshua Pacer not showing too much patience in the early part of this race after starting deep in the field. And he passed Danica Hollifield on the inside before the line on the restart. So he's gonna get a black flag here. He receives the call uh, just out of turn two. He makes the hard left on a pit road, but it's not enough. And he smashes into the end of the pit wall. So that will immediately draw another yellow. And on the following restart, Chuck Johnson doesn't get such a good start. Azarov jumps to his inside, but Johnson again has the preferred line riding around the outside and he holds off Azarov out of turn four. So Azarov's gonna have to keep working and try again, but uh, if you're on the outside, that doesn't necessarily mean you're invincible. You can definitely make a pass work on the inside if you try hard enough. And these guys are trying hard to crash. Packer Carroll and Zach Webster flanking Roy Warren entering turn three, Timothy Ruiz and Riley Durbin, Warren's teammate, entering the picture now. Still a lot of beating and banging as Timothy Ruiz uh, pushes his way through to seventh. So Roy Warren is continuing to lose positions after starting from the outside pole, and these guys seem to want him out of the way. And further back in the field, Mark Thompson pushes his way past the 64 of Xander Massey. And of course, Mark Thompson has driven that MJ 64 in the past. If he wants any more shots in that car, he might want to consider being a little more careful driving around it. But Thompson is trying to march his way forward, and Massey, in one of the best cars in the field, I might add, is not. Thompson's going to get to work on Ashley Tucker and Monica Rook next as Harry Anola makes contact with the lapped car of Xavier Ruiz, taking Lev Azarov with him. So Azarov's going to drop all the way back from the third spot as Xander Massey comes piling into the back of the 121. So for the second week in a row, Xander Massey had several options to get by an accident from way, way back and chose to pile in instead. He seems to keep forgetting that he can't just magically conjure a new car like in Race Sim. Most of the leaders would pit under this caution, but a couple cars stayed out. Daryl Quick takes the lead. Kenny George restarting, restarting in second also did not pit. And Quick gives meaning to his name as he jumps out to a lead of several car lengths on this restart. Quick, only making a second appearance in the Far Low, Low Dollar Series, is no stranger to alternate pit strategy as he finished fifth in the season opener Texas World while running off cycle most of the day. As we've got a small pile up in turn one after Chuck Johnson bounces off the wall and got turned around by Kevin Monroe. Todd Stater also got a small piece of that, but the back end of that 46 car is definitely caved in. Hopefully that won't be too much of a setback for our pole sitter. Daryl Quick and Kenny George are gonna go ahead and make their pit stops under this caution. So they stay on roughly the same cycle as everyone else. Zach Webster is going to inherit the lead. Timothy Ruiz running a second. Kyle Pitts slides up in front of the 112 and checks him up. So Webster pulls out to a bigger lead. And Chuck Johnson is trying his hardest to get into another wreck, it seems. Sliding across Harry Anola's nose and ending up in the wall. But fortunately, Johnson didn't lose a whole lot of ground in that wreck. 
Tr Tristan Kristoff turns David Bloom around on the front stretch. Max Hollifield, uh, Michael Campbell, and Billy Ray Smith Thompson get caught up. And after the restart, Jim Kidd's gonna try four wide into turn one. Kelly Splicing gets launched and climbs over the top of Packer Carroll. A very scary accident for Kelly Splicing. Unfortunately, these walls aren't exactly perpendicular to the track, so sometimes they're just a ramp. And luckily, uh, Splicing was able to get out of that 96 car. And unfortunately, our points leader, Rick Forrest, had to make a, an unscheduled pit stop just before that caution came out, so he's gonna fall a lap down. Zach Webster leads the field down for another round of pit stops. Daryl Quick and, and uh, Kenny George once again stay out and inherit first and second, but Quick doesn't get as good of a jump as the last time he took over the lead, and now he's gotta contend with a couple cars trying to get their laps back. Rick Forrest and Timothy Ruiz. Here comes Hunter Blaze on the inside of Kenny George, looking for the second spot, using the lapped cars as a pick. Rick Forrest, r racing uh, the leader very, very hard, getting into his door a little bit through turn two, but Quick is trying to hold him off, keep him as a cushion in between himself and the rest of his competition. Forrest checks up off of turn four. Quick pulls ahead, but then he immediately has to drop into the pit lane, cut tire on the eight car, is gonna force Daryl Quick to give up the lead, but he is saved from going a lap down. Contact between Max Hollifield and Kevin Monroe is gonna put the 51 in the wall. Hollifield unfortunately was running in fifth place and is gonna lose several spots. But again, this immediate caution is going to save Daryl Quick from going a lap down. Hunter Blaze is going to inherit the lead on this restart. Danica Hollifield and Zach Webster right behind him. Now this is a familiar running order, as these were the guys uh, battling for the win at Lakewood just a few weeks ago. And Hunter Blaze came out on top, but he just smacked the wall. Coming off at turn four, he was bouncing off of the walls at Lakewood too. Billy Ray Smith Thompson getting very aggressive on this restart with a damaged car. He sticks it into turn one and it doesn't work. He spears Chuck Johnson taking the both end of the wall. Xavier Ruiz. Caught up in another one as well as Michael Campbell. Billy Ray Smith Thompson has made a hero of himself at, here at Albuquerque before. He flipped his truck over in a FARC Truck Series race here a few years ago, but was so far ahead he went on to win the race anyway, but he wasn't going to make a hero of himself carrying way too much speed into turn one like that. Hunter Blaze and Danica Hollifield pitted under that caution leaving the race in the hands of Harry Essanola with Zach Webster giving chase. Rick Forrest is still trying to get his lap back, but Enola is going to win the, that battle as we have an immediate caution, and it's for Kyle Pitts smashing into the end of the pit wall. He had a penalty on the restart and came in, uh, didn't turn hard enough to the left. The Fark Truck Series regular was running 22nd at the time. Let's try this again. Enola continues to lead. Rick Forrest had to pit under that yellow and lost uh, his spot at the head of the inside line. So Enola's got a clear track ahead of him right now, not having to fight anyone at the moment, but Zach Webster is certainly looking hungry. Webster has not won a race since Salem in 2014, and that was his only career win to date. But Webster has a mirror full of Kevin, Kevin Monroe, who has not won since 2015, and Monroe dives to the inside, almost slides right into Webster's door, but despite that messy entry, he's hanging in there on the inside, and he might make that pass work. Monroe clears Webster for second, and now uh, Lev Azarov sitting back there in fourth. Looks to make a move on the 41 as well, as Monroe pulls away. Monroe recently announced that the 2017 season will be his last behind the wheel. So he's gonna be fighting hard to grab at least one more win uh, in his very long fart career. He's been racing in the series uh, since 2001. Lev Azarov is making some moves on Zach Webster, but he's he isn't quite able to make the inside line work. He's definitely been struggling on that inside line, at least compared to some of his competitors. Roy Warren has made his way back up to fifth. He dropped a lot of positions at the initial start, but he's persevered and kept his car clean. 
and he's been rewarded by picking a lot of those positions back up, though he's now being challenged by Daryl Quick and uh, Chuck Johnson. Daryl Quick in the eight is one of the fastest cars on the track right now. He's been on a mission ever since having to make that unscheduled stop. Mark Thompson is having a good run as well, trying to hold off Hunter Blaze. Uh, Thompson running in eighth right now. I've talked a lot about uh, Mark Thompson's unusual strategy for tackling the full 2017 season. Uh, hopping from ride to ride, uh, he recently got a deal with the Hollifield team to run some races for them later in the season. And for the next race, he's got a deal lined up with Freya and Saito. So if Mark Thompson manages to pull off uh, the championship, he's going to have a lot of people to thank at the awards banquet. Shout out to David Bloom running uh, 20th in the 06 for Dale Clow Racing. Yes, he's the last car running on the track. Yes, he was just holding up John Burr of all people just now. But he's done what the 16 drivers behind him haven't today, and that is survive. And this has definitely turned into one of those races where if you can't outrun your opponents, then you can, fo you can focus on outlasting them. So regardless of what happens with David Bloom between now and the end of the race, he's gonna walk away with the top 20 finish. And for Dale Clow Racing, that is a rarity outside of the 20 car double header races. Though I'm sure a lot of these leaders coming by would really prefer him to get off the track. Meanwhile, Harry Asanola continues to pull away even as he deals with some of these lapped cars, Todd Stater and Tristan Kristoff. Enola's making his FARC return this season after spending 2016 in the ASCC. And while his schedule isn't quite as full as it was in 2015 when he picked up two wins for Tom Delgado Racing, he has been just as fast. However, he may have a challenger in his teammate Daryl Quick, who is continuing to pick up positions and chase him down. Though he's running out of time to do it, and he's only making the move for third just now on Chuck Johnson as we approach 20 laps to go. But if Quick keeps up his pace, we may see a Pearson Sweeney fight for the win, and that would be quite the story, especially since that team has not won in well over a year. But Johnson is fighting back and squeezing Daryl Quick into the wall. He does not want to lose that third spot, and he's probably been seeing red after getting wrecked by Quick's other teammate. But he gets into the back of a lapped car, Bregium Antitonin, and that is going to bring out the caution. With 19 laps to go, the field is gonna get bunched up once again. This is not what Harry Essanola wanted to see after, after getting so far ahead. And that long green flag run has done a number on everyone's tires. The leaders are going to have to pit uh, so close to the end because they'd be sitting ducks otherwise. If they stay out and the cars behind them pit, they're going to be at a huge disadvantage but we've got someone gambling on old tires. Danica Hollifield stays out to take the lead. Hollifield has come close to victory in the last couple of weeks. She was in the fight for the win at Lakewood until she uh, got a little over exuberant and spun herself out. She finished second at Nashville to Bob Steffens. And now she leads on the restart with 14 laps to go. Can she hold off Harry Essanola? No. Enola gets by pretty easily on the outside, and it looks like she might be leaving the door open for Daryl Quick. She knows she's at a disadvantage, but you can't blame the 25 team for trying. And who knows, with so few laps left at a track where the laps go by just like that, she might still benefit overall from staying out and holding off some of the other cars on fresh tires. Danica Hollifield is still looking at a very good result today despite losing the lead right away on the restart. Harry Asanola is still struggling with Rick Forrest, trying to put him back a lap down and gets by him just as his teammate was closing in. Next time by, we'll, we will have 10 laps to go. Daryl Quick just might have the faster car, but he still is going to need some help uh, from some of the lap traffic if he wants to get by Enola, who has dominated the latter half of this race. Daryl Quick has gotten by Rick Forrest now and is looking to close in. Enola looks like he's now migrated towards the bottom of the track, trying to take that option away from Quick. These guys are teammates, but they're racing just as hard 
as if they were fierce rivals. And they're able to get by David Bloom without much of a problem. Uh, Kevin Monroe unfortunately dropped off the lead lap after being penalized on an earlier restart for passing uh, on the inside before the line. And unfortunately, our cameras missed that. And that's going to take away Monroe's opportunity for a top five today. But he's still running just as fast as a lot of these lead lap cars, and he's doing battle with them. I'm not sure if that makes him more or less of a nuisance than the slow lapped cars. Meanwhile, Zach Webster is holding third place, but it's a pretty, pretty lonely third place, as the Pearson Sweeney boys have pulled away from him. Danica Hollifield is trying to hold off her teammate and cousin Max Hollifield for fifth. Max, of course, on much fresher tires, and Hollifield's going to continue to drop back. But with four laps to go, she doesn't have to put up with her ill-handling car for much longer as she now comes under attack from Bob Steffens and Hunter Blaze. Harry Asanola has to check up to avoid running into the back of David Bloom. Here comes Daryl Quick, pouncing to the outside. And the battle for the win is on between the two badass veterans. Harry Asanola arrived on the far scene just before the turn of the decade. Daryl Quick is only making his second low dollar series start today, but he holds three consecutive championships in the AST Super Truck Series. Two laps to go now. Enola trying to hold off his teammate. These guys are coming just inches from the wall. Out of the corners, Quick has closed up on his bumper. Just short of giving him the boot. Entering turn three, and there he goes to the inside. Daryl Quick is trying to make it stick. He Quick takes over the lead as they take the white flag. But Quick drifts up the track in turn one. And Ola sneaks back around. Could he have just been toying with his teammate the whole time? As Anola pulls out to about three car lengths over Quick. Exiting turn four. Harry Anola takes the big bunny bash. Harry Anola and Pearson Sweeney Motorsports return to victory lane today in a 1-2 finish with teammate Daryl Quick. Zach Webster finishes third over Lev Azarov. Max Hollifield grabs his uh, first top five and his second top 10 in his second start of 2017. Bob Steffens finishes sixth and coming into this race second in points, he's going to gain a little bit over leader Rick Forrest. Danica Hollifield has to settle for eighth. Ashley Tucker and Roy Warren round out the top 10. Chuck Johnson tumbles to 11th after tangling with a lapped car. Kenny George 12th. And Mark Thompson was the last car to finish on the lead lap. Rick Forrest has to settle for 15th after being trapped a lap down for the rest of the day. And David Bloom, rounding out the top 20, was the last car to finish. He was 10 laps down. 16 of the 36 starters dropped out. So this race definitely took its toll on a lot of teams, uh, just like Nashville last week. Now let's have a look at the points battle with five races in the books now. Rick Forrest now leads by just 25 points over Bob Steffens. But on the bright side for Rick Forrest, uh, today's 15th place finish was his worst of the young season so far. And he probably would have finished higher if he didn't have to make that emergency stop. It's one of the big stories of 2017 so far. The very small Rick Forrest racing team has proven to be very formidable. The top three have a pretty significant lead over everybody else. Uh, Enola runs fourth after his win, but he doesn't quite have a full season lined up with Pearson Sweeney Motorsports. So as he misses races, he's going to be dropping down the standings. Hunter Blaze in fifth is the highest running rookie, just two points over Mark Thompson. The Ike Durbin racing teammates of Roy Warren and Riley Durbin, 7th and 8th. Chuck Johnson runs 9th, Kevin Monroe 10th. Ashley Tucker is 11th, coming off her second consecutive top 10 finish. And Jim Kidd runs 12th. The next stop on Fark's trip through the American Southwest is... is... Oh no.